Hey, everybody, welcome to Monday This Week in Startups. We had to record this episode twice. So there might be a little bit of consistency problems in the second half, but uh, we re recorded because right after we got off air, Elon Musk's deal with Twitter was approved at $54.20 a share. We covered some other things in the episode, Molly. Yeah, we're going to have a good time talking about that and what we think could happen, a little pros and cons, but we still, I think, agree that ideally pros. Uh, there's also a whole Elon Musk lightning round, and then we end the show with a startup. We live in the future, and that future is sick pneumatic tube package delivery. It's going to be a great show. Stick with us. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Coda. Coda is the all-in-one doc for teams. If you've got a stack of niche workflow tools, or if you're buried in docs and spreadsheets, Coda is the doc that brings it all together. Startups can get a $1,000 credit at coda.io slash twist. Our Crowd. Our Crowd helps you invest early in pre-IPO companies alongside professional VCs. If you're interested in investing, you can join Our Crowd for free at OurCrowd.com slash twist. And Rocket. To hire in today's competitive market, you need outstanding recruiting. Rocket's expert recruiters paired with ML candidate matching set them apart from the rest. Get 20% off your first placement at getrocket.com slash twist. Okay, Molly, in the top news story of the day, Elon Musk has officially acquired Twitter for $54.20, or as we like to say in the business, five four twenty. Five. 420. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, like, this appears to be a papered deal. There is a press release. Mm. Parag uh, Agrawal, the CEO of Twitter has tweeted about how this appears to be the case. Twitter has evidently canceled its uh, corresponding earnings call, which we'll get to in a minute. But yes, here are the facts as we know them at this point. The transaction was unanimously approved by the board just okay. weeks after that same board approved a poison pill to try to stop this purchase. Elon. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> Probably more accurately, but yes. Uh, maybe slow down. Yeah, exactly. Yes, maybe like breaks. make sure it was real. And which make sure that. Turned out to be. Yeah, make sure it's real. And, and yeah, just shake the tree. See if another buyer wants to beat 5, 420. Yeah, exactly. And not surprisingly, no one did. Uh, Elon secured $25.5 billion of fully committed debt and margin loan financing and is providing an approximately $21 billion equity commitment. Okay. After the deal is completed, Twitter will receive will become a private company. Just like that. The purchase price represents a 38% premium to Twitter's closing stock price on April 1st, 2022. Mm. Well, who could have seen this coming? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, as I said, uh, on all in podcast a couple episodes ago, I was fairly certain um, that unless there was another buyer, uh, that Elon would be able to close this deal without any inside information. Um, he tends to get stuff done. Uh, sometimes the timetable is variable. You know, things take longer uh, than Elon expects. Sometimes self driving comes to mind. Other times things happen quicker. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of something happening quicker, uh, or hitting a million cars a year. You know, uh, I think Elon's been ahead of schedule on how many cars he can deliver now. So Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think it's going to be great for Twitter, the product. I think it'll be great for Twitter, the employees. I think their stock options will be worth more, ultimately. Because I think the company will, if it does in fact go private, which I think is going to be a big part of this, uh, they can make very long term decisions. And then who knows, it could become a public company again. I mean, uh, that does happen. Sometimes yeah. in these situations, they, something goes private, you clean everything up very quietly without tipping your cards without explaining to the public markets about having the stock go up and down and make uh employees stock options go underwater above water and, and, and causing that chaos now they can just um you know very um quietly and deftly do uh for this company what elon did at tesla which is run it super professionally um and you know we had michael dell on the program he talked about how hard it is uh to pivot and to iterate on a company when it's public uh, because analysts are smart and dogged and they will watch every move and criticize it and that's why he took dell private for some period of time before it well, went public again yeah right? and that is why uh, elon himself 
evidently tried pretty hard. And, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit later in another little flash roundup of Elon News, tried pretty hard to take Tesla private, presumably for yeah. similar reasons that it is, in fact, kind of exhausting to deal with the the kind of short term shareholder yeah. situation. Now, we would be remiss if we didn't okay. say that there was also a bit of a lot, a good amount of gnashing of teeth and freak out about this development, right? Like, one, is there a part of American society that a billionaire, a tech billionaire doesn't know at this point? But two, people worrying, you know, that one of two things will happen that one, there's there's your optimistic view, sure. grounded in, we should reiterate grounded in the things that Elon Musk himself has said, yep. which is that he's going to clean up the bot problem and make the algorithms transparent. Yep. There's also the less optimistic view that like all of the moderation guardrails might come off, which are grounded in his comments about free speech, which mm -hmm. are vague and, you know, not 100% understood um and that now there's a whole you know there are people tweeting like okay where are you going to go next what's going to be your platform of choice discord is trending <laughs> as a result of this right like there are definitely a lot of people who are like i'm afraid this is going to turn into 8chan and i need to get out well i would argue like the the, the system can only get better from here i mean the, the amount of bots and brigading and madness on the platform is already acute and it right. has been for a decade the technology he, you're saying can only get better. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, I think the situation can only get better because they're not successfully policing the platform today. And yeah. I don't think any yeah. amount of policing um, is going to work. I think you have to have, you know, um, I think you have to attack this on a technology uh, basis. You have to not let people create tons of accounts and you have to have a path towards people to use real names and be verified. You don't mm -hmm. see a fraction of what we see on uh, on Twitter on platforms like LinkedIn or Facebook or other real name platforms. Yeah. And so if there is a path for people to get uh, like Twitter blue to pay and Elon has talked about this publicly to become verified or if there was two levels of verification, the classic blue and let's say a light blue, you could just put your credit card in, you pay 50 bucks a year for Twitter. Now you're verified. Yeah. Now, if you uh, like yourself, Molly would like to have a cleaner experience, you can say I only want to um, have replies posted to my tweets from uh, verified users. Yep. Just like now you can do it with only people who follow you, even though people don't really use that. So I think you'll see the crypto scams and all this other spam go away very quickly. I don't think it's a terribly hard technical problem. I think the reason it hasn't gone away is because it would kill Twitter's numbers. So Twitter management has always lived in constant fear of the stock collapsing, because they stop the bots. And if the bots make up five to 20%, or the anonymous accounts equal 10 to 30%. If you were to deprecate them or make it harder for those accounts to be created, what would happen? The stock price would plummet, Wall Street would say you're not growing anymore. Mm -hmm. So this has been like a crack pipe that Twitter has been on for a long time, yeah. uh, which is, you know, just trying to, you know, get the product to grow. The pernicious nature of that crack pipe is the more you allow those bots to run amok, what happens? You drive good people off the platform. You do. And you end up with just this kind of reinforcing negativity. Like, remember Correct. how it used to be fun to fight on Twitter? I like mm -hmm. an argument. Sure. Why not? A debate is great. But not there, right? It's just it's no. uh, like it's not fun to have... <laughs> Imagine if you're trying to have a dinner party and you were having a philosophical conversation with your friends and you're yes. arguing about this or that. And you're like, I'm taking this side of this position. And then a thousand people ran in through mm -hmm. your front door and started throwing like poop on your table like a bunch of monkeys. Mm. Then all of yes. a sudden your dinner party isn't that fun. And you're like, you no. know, what? I'm just going to keep this to the like all my <laughs> all my spicy takes now I have in group chat. Like <laughs> Correct. And so, you know, so be fun again. And the Twitter? algorithm is comes to mind here. So uh, Elon has been very clear. I, and again, I just encourage people to look at what he's tweeting. He tweets, he's tweeted more in the last month than the last three CEOs combined in the history of Twitter. Yes. I am not kidding. If you took all of Jack's tweets when he was CEO, Parag's, uh, Evs, and Dick Costolos, you put all those tweets together, I think Elon has engaged more people and tweeted more in the last 30 days than all of those CEOs together, all four yeah. of them. And yep. he knows the platform better than they do in, in many ways, because as a power user, he's used it to great effect uh, to get attention for hiring people for his projects or selling cars and generally getting attention for his vision of the future. 
So the algorithm, though, he's been very clear. This should be transparent and all um, shadow banning, all uh, moderation should be clear. Mm -hmm. And so that is uh, a no brainer. And again, I would just listen to what he's saying, what he's saying, what, what he said about a Tesla wound up being true about Tesla, what he said about, you know, the rocket ship company came true, Starlink came true, people are using Starlink, and what he's saying about Twitter will, of course, become true. He's got a great sense of humor. Uh, and we're friends, obviously. So I, I say that, you know, um, just as a friend, he's got a great sense of humor. And as an executive, he does what he says he's going to do. So he does what he says he's going to do. And now if he's going to do the if he's going to make the algorithm transparent, if he's going to make uh, all of the actions about censoring or turning off or suspending people more clear, he's going to do that. And that would be great for everybody. If you're a startup, you know, you have to save where you can. That's why we love Coda. Coda is one doc to rule them all. In Coda, your text and tables can live together in the same document. All of your valuable data plans, objectives, and strategies are in one place. Nothing gets lost or is out of sync, and your team is literally on the same page. Coda works right out of the box, and it's customizable. And you can create a wiki for your team, onboard new hires from anywhere, adapt quickly to any major or minor changes in your business, and there are templates for basically anything that you can duplicate and start using today. My guy Precious made a beautiful template for investor updates that you can go duplicate right now. Just go to thisweekinstartups.com slash investor updates. Investor updates are so important. If you're a startup, you need to send them. If you're raising another round, they're gonna be more likely to forward your update with permission to another investor who they wanna introduce you to. But if you don't send those investor updates, well, then you're gonna have a problem. Here's your call to action. Join the productivity revolution and sign up today for Coda. Head to coda.io slash twist and you'll get $1,000 in credits. So generous. That's C-O-D-A dot I-O slash twist to get $1,000 off. Thanks for supporting the show, Coda. Yeah. It should be more clear. I mean, I nobody like, doesn't want more control over the algorithm, right? I, I, a hundred percent. Listen, I'm, I'm pro- I am pro all of these. Yeah. How and in the din in true dinner party fashion, mm -hmm. we should acknowledge the weirdness of billionaires continuing to buy every part of billion of of American life. Like that is weird. Uh, two. Well, I mean, it's kind of always been that way, Molly. Like if two, you look at the there's great sense of humor, and then yeah. there's like troll and shit poster and pedo bear. Like there is no question okay. that Elon is also a troll and a shit poster, and it it, it distorts Wait, people's impression. <laughs> Well, you know him. So you uh, yeah. have the sort of the other side of the coin, yeah. whereas a lot of people don't. So in that sort of like, I don't know anything. I only know what people think about things. Yeah. People think a lot of things about well, him. Uh, and yeah. I'm just super curious I, to see how this is all going to unfold uh, as a product. Yeah, and I mean, I, I get a personality. People, you know, I get people's concern about billionaires buying things. By the way, it's always been that way. Uh, you know, we we had Hearst and everybody else owning media channels, you know, yes, for hundreds of years. So let's not pretend like people of means can't buy you know, big things. Mm -hmm. Let's also not pretend that one individual can change the world with one essay, one video, one interview, one protest, etc. These things are also true. Yeah. And so there is a counterbalance. And I, I don't know, let's look at the last time this happened, Washington Post, uh, the Atlantic, have these products become better under Lorraine Powell jobs and, you know, Jeff Bezos or not, I mm -hmm. would argue those products are much better of late. So I don't know what you what do yeah. you think, Molly? Is Washington I mean, the Post Atlantic a better is, product? And the Atlantic a better product? The Atlantic is fantastic, and the Washington Post is revived, and journalists are getting paid, and he seems to have stayed out of their business. I'm not like I'm not again. Right. I'm just pointing out the last time that happened, it was the Gilded Age that preceded like a Great Depression. You know, I mean, when there that stratification happens and privatization, it's just a it's like a it's a spectrum, and and this is sort of like a new high on that spectrum. I definitely think that he is getting more heat than other billionaires who buy a lot of stuff. I mean, like, here's, and yeah, it's probably yeah. because he is so visible and I'll take the counter to is it. A poster and a troll. <laughs> here's what happens when you're highly influential and you've got money and you buy something like this. You really have to be thoughtful about it because there's going to be a ton of scrutiny. So when David Bradley bought um, the Atlantic and then he sold it uh, to Lorraine Powell jobs or I think mm -hmm. most of it, you know, he as a high profile person, David Bradley, uh, who I know, he was incredibly thoughtful. Lorraine Powell Jobs is being incredibly thoughtful. Jeff Bezos is being incredibly thoughtful. You have to be incredibly thoughtful about this or else it can blow up in your lap. And even yes. controversial folks like 
The Intercept, which was funded by Piero Midiar. I mean, that was a really, you know, edgy publication, right? Like, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think most people would say the world is better because it exists. So in the examples I gave of the last four ownerships that I can think of, it's gone in the right direction. Which one hasn't gone in the right direction? Facebook, right? That's right. the one where I think we're all like, Ugh, that's kind of a bummer. So is the Washington Post public? Like, is this no. the right? Is this the right corollary? Like they didn't. New York like Times Doreen Powell Jobs took a majority stake. Yes. But she didn't like buy it wholesale and take it private. No, no, the Atlantic was already private, but she controls it now. So she has right. the majority, she controls it. And David Bradley, who was, I don't know if he's a billionaire, but certainly a centimillionaire, um, worth hundreds of millions. He bought it for a hundred million back in the day. I remember that number. And he did a great job stewarding it up until this point. So generally speaking, the post you know, is public. I think uh, Washington Post is public. I, I'm not sure about that. I don't think so. Washington Post. Unlike Amazon. No, the post private. became a subsidiary. It did go private. Okay. Yeah. So, so similar. Similar. Yeah, listen, I'm not and I'm, the New York Times is controlled we, by a family. And uh, most people argue they are thoughtful and do a good job. I mean, you can critique it, I guess, on the margins. But um, yeah, that, I that's think why just, I think the fears like, are overblown. The thing about the thing about Elon is that he's very polarizing. I think we sure. should take these arguments at face value on some level and take them apart. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm yeah. not sitting here saying it's going to be a net negative. But I mm -hmm. think that it's reasonable to be like, huh? Yeah. Someone just came along and was like, I like this better than you do. I can be a better steward. I'm going to buy it. And now all, Let, and now a lot of people are yeah. consternated for, you know, for lack of a better the, way to put I it. I think the, the folks who are hand wringing um, are just it's, virtual. I think it's virtual it's Twitter. I think it's, it's Twitter. virtual signaling on Twitter. Um, the, the product has been a disaster for a decade. Mm -hmm. We all use it in this disastrous, broken format already. Yes. I think it's only going to get better. So, you know, it, it, it's it's one of these platforms that's full contact. It's one that uses words, not images and videos. And so, uh, you know, I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, he's going to bring a level of transparency. And we talked about before on this show, you know, the really hard decisions that the owner of these services have to make. And I can only think of two Sensor, we, we, you and I uh, talked about this previously because we had to retape today's show, but I think we should revisit <laughs> the discussion we had on the specific instances of what, of what, are, what people are calling bans and censorship. Bans and right? censorship. You have Trump yeah. yes. being banned. The second one was Hunter Biden's laptop and the New York Post being banned. And the third one was the discussion over the lab league theory. Mm -hmm. And it was that um, suspension for zero hedge, which people claim is a Putin mouthpiece. I'm not certain. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, if you look at all three of those, man, these were hard decisions, weren't they, Molly? Yes. To make? I mean, I mean, these were unprecedentedly difficult decisions. In the case of Trump, insurrection. Yeah. It, to overturn a free and fair election. Like, yeah. you make that crazy. call. I dare <laughs> you, right? Hard the, call to make, and people's lives were at risk. People's right? lives and, are at risk. And, and that was, uh, I mean, that was made universally. I wouldn't have made it a lifetime ban. I would have made it a, I don't know, two year ban or something, and then doubled it each time he did something stupid like that. That's just my personal feeling. But that was a hard decision to make. I mean, and then the New York Post one yeah. was a hard one. Yes. And the New York Post one, you know, maybe you could refresh people's Twitter, memory. On what that one. Twitter said at the time. So this New York Post story came out that was like, Oh, we have the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop, which had been this big sort of um, Republican bugaboo, like this is going to yes. prove that he's totally corrupt. And this is going to end the Biden candidacy and eff effectively u.s intelligence agencies got in touch with twitter and said this is a a hack and leak operation this is yeah. this is you know russian interference in our election in the form of a hack and leak much like the podesta emails and the clinton emails back in the day were and so then twitter was like okay we don't want to and they said if you link to this you are linking to stolen information so twitter was like we don't want that smoke yeah they block links to that story and remember, this was during, uh, to, to set the table for that decision, we had proven that the Russians tried to interfere in 2016. We knew that Trump had asked the Russians to hack Hillary Clinton and the Clintons and the DNC. And we knew at that time, shortly before it, that Trump himself had asked the Ukraine to hack uh, or censor Biden and release information and that he was withholding 
uh, aid to them for which he was impeached. Uh, So, you know, when you look at that collectively and and put aside your partisanship for a second, because it does turn out that Hunter Biden is a wildcat who was absolutely grifting off of his dad's name and he's under investigation by the DOJ. Everybody knows that. So maybe, you know, it'll turn out that like, oh my God, this guy is the most corrupt guy on the planet and he'll go to jail. Uh, let's put that aside for a second, partisanship, because <laughs> both things could be true. Yeah. How do you make that decision yeah. as a platform? It's a very hard decision to make. You've got the DOJ or somebody from the FBI calling you saying, that's stolen. Don't link to it. We're in the middle of an election. And we know that the last election was interfered with. Do not participate in this. And then in addition to that, it included revenge porn and, you know, um, selfies and naked photos, Literally, which yeah. is also against Linking to that is against the terms of service of all these social networks for good reason, obviously, right. you know, you don't want to encourage people to use them for that. So you put all that together. What a hard, hard, hard decision to make. Content moderation case. is a nightmare. Like yeah. it is a nightmare. And so I think it is fair to be. Elon Musk is very thoughtful and his companies tackle incredibly complex problems. Yeah, this is an incredibly complex problem. You know, at times, and other times, it's very simple. If you dock somebody, um, if you're a bot account and you're spamming, super easy. Yeah. So I think there'll be a, a series of things that are exceptionally easy to fix. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think if they, you know, move from an advertising model or you know, keep the advertising model, but if people can pay 50 or 100 bucks a year, or if you're someone like me with 500,000 followers, or you've got a couple of 100,000, you know, would I pay? I don't know thousand dollars a year five thousand dollars a year to get you know a much better package of customer service whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> of uh you know well no it could be optional metrics yeah. etc uh and to have a blue check mark yeah of course i would and if you're yeah. a company you know they already spend money on third party tools to the tune of hundreds of thousands a year so twitter should sell you know analytics tools and give incredible customer support and insights to um companies and companies and high profile people would absolutely pay for it so there's so many wins here and uh yeah so what, what's the other reaction we'll get some live reactions well here. let's talk about the fun conspiracy theories too can we <laughs> i'm sorry conspiracy theories oh, not no. even the conspiracy theories but <laughs> well first of all this isn't even a conspiracy theory this is just the other interesting wrinkle to this which is ah. zero hedge tweeting and reporting and i think okay. parag con- con- confirming that twitter will not hold its earnings call now that's interesting that right so on the one hand you could be like well yeah it's being bought and taken private so why have an earnings call Mm. but it also nick raised the point uh producer nick that maybe the earnings call the earnings were indeed so that the board got an early look at him was like let's sell yeah who knows Uh, (laughs) i don't know like but i that's a conspiracy theory um i yeah maybe uh i think do they will they ever do another one is the question i wonder it's time for another R Crowd deal of the week. Right now, you can join R Crowd's investment in Sotero. According to the deal memo, Sotero has developed a patented new approach to data protection. This new method eliminates the gaps of traditional methods by securing any data asset, whether it's on premises or in the cloud. And according to their deal memo, Sotero is trusted by one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies. You can invest in Sotero at rcrowd.com twist today. All over the world, companies like Sotero are innovating and driving returns for investors. Our crowd analyzes many of these companies, then they select the ones with the greatest growth potential and they bring them to you. They invest from personalized medicine to robotics to cybersecurity, where companies spend $150 billion annually. Our crowd identifies innovators, so you can invest when growth potential is greatest, and that's early. If you're an accredited investor, you can join our crowd for free. O U R C R O W D dot com slash twist and review the current deals. Once again, that's our crowd dot com slash twist to sign up for free. The poll in our YouTube among the noties oh. currently sits at uh, should Twitter expand its paid product? 77% yes, 23% no. Like people are definitely willing to pay. People are for paying a good for product, blue right now and it does nothing. I mean, right. I literally get nothing out of blue except maybe being able to change my buttons at the bottom. Um, imagine if it gave me like metrics and insights and customer support. Like imagine you paid $100 a year and you could actually have somebody email you back from Twitter support. Um, would be pretty amazing, right? Or if you paid 5000 a year for a business account like mine, 
and I was able to collect more email addresses or know my users or sort my users, or maybe I could DM all my users. How great would it be mm -hmm. if you had a paid account? Because I use a third party tool called social metrics or something like that back in the day to email everybody uh, who was following me, hey, I'm having a book um, signing in New York. And I emailed every person in New York, I'm having this book signing, here's a link if you want to sign up. And hundreds of people showed up. What if that was a paid feature? What if I could say I could DM if I paid but uh, a penny per follower, mm -hmm. which would be $5,000 a year at 500,000. Uh, if I paid $5,000 a year, but I could DM, you know, up to a 1000 of my followers up to 10% of my followers, right? Anytime I wanted. Wow, that'd be incredible. Yeah, oh my lord. That's the killer idea right there. It is. Because then you don't have to collect email, right? Like everybody's in the business. If you want to be building a community, you're oh in God. essentially the business of collecting email so you can have a powerful email list and cause and action. And if you could I do just that. I created the killer feature. I, yeah. I if only I knew somebody. Do you need to I was gonna say if do I you knew need to make somebody who worked at Twitter, <laughs> I could I could send them this idea. Do you need to call someone? <laughs> do you want to just give them a little yeah, give exactly. a quick call? Um, <laughs> give a quick call. <laughs> But seriously, like link, uh, Twitter could have killed LinkedIn years ago. I, uh, imagine too, and imagine like it, stopping. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine stopping the perverse incentives of like, oh, we hired this person because they have a uh, half a million or a million Twitter followers. When we know nothing about whether those followers actually translate into engagement. How many? I mean, I used to get offers. I had like, I don't know, a million followers on Google Plus. Remember when Google yes, Plus existed for like five minutes? Yes, they were like, oh yeah, you should. None of those were real. None. Like people were like, oh, we noticed you have a million. Do you want to do this job? And I'm like, sure. About eight of them are real. So if you're, <laughs> no, if you, you think, tell the realness because you would share something and nobody would click on it. Right. So, it was all like weird semi English marriage proposals. It were all of my Google Plus interaction interactions. Right. So the idea that they could be high, be making decisions based on actual metrics on Twitter instead of what is bots and what is fake all activity. Right. Like, oh, can we dude. do a round of dunking? May we do a round of dunking? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. here we go. All right. So, on uh, All In Episode 76, I wrapped the show by asking my besties <laughs> to predict what would happen. Sack said, no deal, because it was rigged against Elon, the fix is in, the, Dem the was Democrats, his oh, crazy Democrats, conspiracy right. theory that Biden, did Biden would put his thumb on the scale. I was like, wow, you've lost it, Sacks. Uh, Freeberg said no deal because Twitter's board would uh, run a drawn out process and find a better offer. Shamat said no deal because Twitter would reject the deal against their own best interests, which result in years of lawsuits. What did Jake Hal say? Well, let's play the 27 second clip. My prediction is the board uh, tries to fight it. Stock collapses. Nobody thinks it's going to get done. Elon lowers his offer and he wins it by the end of the year and gives him a lower offer. You didn't like it before? Always with the optimism. Now we're going 49. It. That's very Michael Corleone. Yeah. Now I the offer is 49 and it goes down $2 <laughs> every quarter. Until you guys acquiesce. <laughs> the end. It's trading at 30. I lower my offer. <laughs> <laughs> I just love when you get all mafia. You're like, oh, yeah, it goes down $2 every day until you finally, like, you will I try cave. to not curate this. Uh, yeah. My, I try to <laughs> tamp down the Brooklyn inside of me, but that would have been my shirt. <laughs> And he didn't even have to. He did he not have even to, have so to lower done. the price. It got done. Now, in a, I would like never, a day. I would never, um, I, I would never dunk on a fellow podcaster, uh, but everybody's favorite uh, pundit, uh, which, you know, I think this is like, um, who was the guy who was the uh, SNL guy? Andy Kaufman. I, I think mm -hmm. Prof G is like Andy Kaufman. I think it's like a giant performance art I to like get this. every prediction wrong just to get ratings, right? So it's kind of like he's trolling everybody, but Prof G, um, said uh, that this would never happen. This deal could never happen. And the market said it would never happen. Here's 33 seconds from of ice cold uh, ice from Prof G. I don't think this is a serious offer and the market doesn't <laughs> think it's a serious offer. I think this is the first time I've ever seen, I don't know if you've ever seen an offer to take a company private at a 20% premium. And on that day, the market actually takes the stock down because the market looks at this and says, okay, let's look at the words. <laughs> That's your brand right. My best yeah. and final offer. That Deals true. never get done on the first offer, meaning he isn't serious. <laughs> and if I'm going to have to reconsider my share position, this sounds to me like the market has interpreted this, and I think correctly, as I'm about to sell my shares. And as a result, the market has gone down. All right. 
there you have it, folks, from the professor himself. <laughs> How many <laughs> ice you cold takes? Did you do that just now? <laughs> it's just so many ice cold takes in one clip. Oh, it's just, man. he got it so wrong. Um, and to his credit, Prof G um, and RIP, your third TV show that failed in Rome. Um, wrong again, he writes on his Twitter. So one thing you could say about Prof G is that he, he always owns, owns, he owns it. He owns his terrible takes. And the deal did get done at the price. It did get done on the first try. And he was completely wrong. I honestly, I'm going to give him this one, though, to be fair. Like, <laughs> who, it's like, it's a little unfair because he's up against you. You know all the cards on the table, right? I don't, I'm trying to think what my, I think there's as good a chance as any that I would have been like, I don't think this is a serious bit. I'm not really sure. Because who knows? I mean, um, I think yeah, your true. point, your point is actually probably the one to hold on to, which is, that he does what he says he's going to do like that, yes. I think. And there have been like funding secured that, you know, as has now been revealed. And we'll talk about this a little later in the show. Mm. He meant that when he said that he meant he that. actually that meant it. Yes. We'll get to that plan. in a second because those texts have been leaked. But I, so I, I just want to say it's really valuable to just start being like, what if you take Elon literally and yes, seriously, literally just take him seriously and literally he, he's he's not making jokes. He's just. You know, sometimes he's wrong, like, uh, you know, some things take longer than he thinks, but he sets aspirational targets. Sometimes he hits them, sometimes he's late. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, just so you know, thank you to uh, CNN Plus for allowing us to use that 33 second clip. Rest <laughs> in peace. CNN Plus uh, lasted uh, shorter than Elon Musk's bid. <laughs> the oh bid got God. done in the less bid time. Got done sooner. <laughs> On the first try. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then and I just want to say that take aged. Just like milk on a hot summer's day. <laughs> just <laughs> another classic Prof G. Hey, Prof G, can you say that? Just please, Prof G, uh, just say there is no way Inside will become a top 100 site in the world. Just say that. If you could just say that. He's if like you the cooler. Just say that. I could get there so much easier. We should, um, though. I mean, I, I want to be respectful of all those CNN producers who've been laid yes. off. And also, we should probably hire some. Let's get them. Yes. Whoever was. Prof G's producer uh, on CNN uh, Plus, H hit me up. <laughs> I want to hear the inside stories and I have a job for you. We got work for you. Come see me. I'm at the Plaza Hotel. You asked for Frank White. Um, <laughs> so a little more fun happened on Twitter about Twitter. Uh, oh, no, your really? bestie, David Sachs, and Kara ah, Swisher having agreed. a rare moment of agreement. David Sachs tweets, crazy thought. What if Jack masterminded mm. this whole thing? Incentives do seem mm. to be aligned here. Maybe take it private, decentralized. Mm. Kara Swisher hmm. responds, for once, me and David Sachs agree on one intriguing conspiracy theory. This is like Knives Out, Internet Mogul's version. Well, that's true, because Kara and David don't like each other. Um, they, they couldn't be on further sides of the aisle, and I'm friends with both. So there you have it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, uh, you know, David's been getting into these conspiracy theories a whole bunch now. So I don't think Jack mastermind the whole thing. No, um, I'm sure, you know, Jack is supportive of Elon. Um, and I'm... Wouldn't be surprised if Jack was involved in the future. Why wouldn't he be? So, yeah. I think mastermind is probably strong. Did he encourage it? Do, do there's incentives line? Might it? he uh, come yeah. back? Absolutely. But yeah, I don't know about masterminded. Yeah. yeah. When you're growing your company, two things are true. Hiring is incredibly important. We all know that. And it can really be frustrating and slow you down. Well, Rocket is a startup focused recruiting agency that uses machine learning to supercharge its team of 60 recruiters, and then they can help you find and close amazing hires. And all of this is white glove service. You're going to meet better candidates and you're going to lower your number of hiring mistakes, which are the worst. As we all know, Rocket is trusted by companies like Tinder, Nerd, Wallet, and Carta. These are the top performing companies in the industry. And it was started by former tech founders who understand how to hire at scale. Rocket was built by founders for founders. Rocket is currently helping a well-funded early stage API company called Rudder. Rudder is hiring across engineering, product, marketing, and sales, and their hiring is going great. Rudder's founder said they couldn't recommend a better early stage recruiting partner to work with than Rocket. I want you to go to getrocket.com slash twist and use the promo code twist for 20% off your first placement and zero dollars required up front. So no risk. Getrocket.com slash twist. 
and use the code WIS for 20% off. Okay, Molly and I recorded this next segment before the news broke uh, of Elon successfully uh, buying Twitter. And again, that's going to take, you know, I would think months to close. Uh, so it's not a done deal yet, but it seems like it's done. Uh, we're on its way to being done. Anything could happen, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, here's our discussion of Elon's back and forth with the Saudis about taking Tesla private. Turns out he had the receipts. And we'll talk a little bit about the back and forth with uh, Bill Gates shorting Tesla. Ouch. That's going to be a hard one to cover. Enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. Should we just do like a little lightning round of, I mean, Elon is okay, the yeah, news gift that never keeps that giving. So there's a couple other Elon related news oh, no, things. Please and don't re-aggregate the stuff. I, mean, I don't want to talk about my friend too much, but no, I well, will just I, give my, I'll give my quick take on each of them. Okay. This one, I think, is actually, this is a, a redemption tale in some okay. ways. And and Elon Musk actually talked about this at that TED Talk okay. when they got done with talking about whether he was going to buy Twitter and completely mangling concepts sure. around free speech. They <laughs> they talked about uh, this thing where he got in trouble with the SEC because he had tweeted funding secured yeah. and funding was not secured to take Tesla private. Now, as a result of this shareholder lawsuit, a lot of these texts are coming out. Mm -hmm. Um some of which appear to validate yes. what Elon said and that te TED talk and what he has apparently always maintained, which is like, I really thought funding had been secured. Yeah. And in this case, it's evidently because of a conversation that he had had with the managing director of Saudi Arabia's public invest investment fund, Yasir al Um, in which effectively he was like whoa 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 we had a conversation i'm just yeah. gonna i'm gonna uh, go ahead and paraphrase elon was like dude we talked and you told me you were a hundred percent in to give me the money to take tesla private yeah. and then al rumayan wrote back and was like you don't get off the bus without a transfer buddy and mm -hmm. elon was like you are throwing me under the bus here man because they yeah. issued this sort of weak sauce statement saying like well i don't know we might be interested but yeah funding is not secured let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves here uh, so they had, yeah, I mean, this was obvious, like he, they had told him, you know, that they were in, they said this in front of the CFO of Tesla. And so maybe it wasn't papered, but they had given him the agreement. And, um, I think this is why he's got this really deep grudge with mm -hmm. the SEC. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, I, I, like, I mean, why would you tweet that you have the funding secured if you don't? And he did. No, but man, you got to have the paper. Maybe. The paper. Yeah. You don't get off the bus without a transfer. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, some people are, um, you know, the handshake deal is a handshake deal. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, listen, that sucks. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, yeah. shady business dealings by the Saudis. Shocker. Shocker. But, um, um well, but there yeah. it is. So, okay. And then. I guess uh, there was confirmation of what I said last week about Bill Gates' short position. Yeah. So anyway, obviously, yep. uh, there was a lot of discussion about this going on amongst uh, friends of mine. And yeah, so yeah, uh, it was obviously leaked. It was not leaked by me, but somebody leaked tweets uh, or, or text exchange Next. with Gates. The question is, when did Gates buy these shares? When did he short the stock? And if to cover this, now that they've had such extraordinary results, this might cost Gates like billions of dollars to cover this position. So I wonder. Yeah, he had a half. Well, I mean, a if billion. he put five hundred and then the stock tripled, he would owe a billion dollars. If it ten x, he would owe a lot more. So you know, four point five billion or something. Like covering it is uh, really hard. Yeah. Uh, uh, hmm. So I mean, that's why I, I think that's, that's why I call all it the Tesla news we can do. <laughs> I believe it really is now. On to a very interesting story coming out of the EU, which is so... Um, and, and, which, and paradoxically, Elon confirmed all this on Twitter, which he's in the process yes. of buying, apparently. So, and all of this was leaked on Twitter. On Twitter. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, when it's his own personal... Uh, okay. When it's his own personal uh, news service, we'll know well, why. you know, it's going to... I think what you'll see is all the bots... Uh, and the brigading is going to be really hard to do in the future. I would say we're sitting here a year from now and Elon's been working on it for a year. I think the number of bots will go down by 80 or 90%. And the issues around brigading of fake bots, because every time I get into a conversation with Sachs, and I do, I basically take screenshots of one or two just to prove my point. 
mm-hmm. of people who created their accounts in the last six months who have zero followers or 15 followers and the 15 followers are all bots. Mm-hmm. And these, these right wing lunatics and also people on the left, of course, uh, the, basically the lunatic fringe. They are just exceptional at creating legions of bots. Twitter allows them to create legions of bots because it makes the numbers look good, yeah. uh, increases the number of tweets, increases the number of new accounts. So, you know, somebody who's on the right or the left, they create 50 bots. They have them all set up on their computers somehow, and they just flip between the accounts, and then they will reply to my reply with six different versions of the same thing. Now it looks like I'm losing the argument, and then Sax is liking all the bots. And I'm like, Sax, you're liking bots. Like, it makes it look like, I mean, I don't think Sax has bots, obviously, but his stands are creating 50 bots. And then they're like, oh, J. Cal is a libtard, blah, 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 blah. And he's fat. And I'm like, okay, I mean, he was I, fat, I not I fat anymore. I love how you always give the credit. Like, I love how you always both sides this and say that it also happens on the left because like, well, I do have it. I, I did. I do have it happen in San Francisco politics, but I would say it's probably 80. It's probably 70, right? 30. I mean, there have been left. lots and lots of studies on this, to be clear. Like the disinformation that is being there. This is a verified mm. phenomenon that is not both sides. Well, also it's like Sachs is like, there's no Russian interference. I'm like, are you deranged? Like, how can you? And he's like, tell me the top three Russian bots. I'm like, do I work at the CIA? Like, they're shutting them down in real time. Like, yeah, obviously, if you want to know which bots are currently spreading misinformation, you might want to talk to the CIA, FBI, <laughs> etc., who are responsible for breaking the bot rings along mm-hmm. with Twitter. See, so uh, they got a lot to say about it. They got yeah. a lot to say. They know well, they know who it is. Speaking of all this, I read that the EU mm-hmm. is now and the EU is a finer filter on, you know, tech companies. Uh, they they created like GDPR and you know, they're, they're kind of like mm-hmm. the apple of privacy. And they, they just hold the line a little bit tighter than say US regulators. Tell us about this new Digital Services Act, because I think that this is going to dovetail with Elon's plans for and Jack's plans for roll your own algorithm. And th- I think this could be quite interesting. This is a huge deal. And it's so woulda, shoulda, coulda, because mm-hmm. it's the kind of regulation that had it occurred here in the United States, five years ago, six years ago, mm. two years, 10 years ago, when everybody was calling for it, it actually would have addressed many of the things that made Twitter so effective in terms of and Facebook made them so effective in terms of um, platforms for misinformation and disinformation, and might have even, you know, left Twitter's board in a better position than they're in now. The upshot of it is that it's called the Digital Services Act, and will cover how companies should police content on their platform. It will include Uh, obligations to remove illegal content and goods more quickly. And that gets to, for example, like Google and all those pharmaceutical ads. Um, Also explain to users and how and researchers how their algorithms work, actual algorithm transparency, and then taking stricter action on the spread of misinformation and potentially disinformation. It only applies to EU citizens, but it much like the GDPR will probably lead multinationals to implement just kind of a one policy that you know conforms to the european standards and then applies here as well and it seems like a net good yeah I, and i think the hard part is going to be like many of the actions taken inside these algorithms um are very complicated and i'm not sure that these companies are going to have an easy time explaining what they're doing and yep. the explanations of these algorithm tweaks could be quite embarrassing and or uh, a cookie jar moment. In other words, Zuckerberg or somebody at Twitter or somebody at YouTube might have said, we need to hit our numbers. How do we get more increased, you know, minutes per user? And they said, well, you know, there's these like clusters of like minded people. So you know, if we dial that up now, the downside might be you might send people to misinformation or Alex Jones or, you know, conspiracy theories. And they're like, okay, well, people can decide for themselves. If it's a conspiracy theory, we want more minutes as opposed to making the decision of, well, we don't want to send people to low source to anonymous or lower quality sources just to increase our minutes. Like nobody's making that decision inside a company who's got stock options, you know, and has to hit a target. So this might, uh result in um 
uh, let's just say people leaking how these algorithms were made. And there probably is a bunch of cleanup going on right now, Molly. Oh, I'm sure at some of these organizations, they're like, what's the do we have a log of all the discussions about tweaking the algorithm? Can yeah. we purge that log? <laughs> and nobody talk about how we tweak the algorithm except in this, like skiff, you know, those skiff rooms, mm-hmm. like there's going to be a skiff room at Google, and Twitter, <laughs> and Facebook, where they're like, and YouTube, burn it, burn where they're it. like, yeah, the, six people can go in and no devices and we're going to talk about how we make these changes and then the changes occur and then whatever tweaks happen there that like wipe out what we told the algorithm to do this is going to get gnarly because oh i think so what if somebody was like you know what's really interesting uh it turns out people who listen to you know this conspiracy theorist or people who um get outraged if we put something that's outrageous uh yeah those people come back to twitter the next day like, it could be that somebody was like, you know what, if you want to get people to come back tomorrow, show them something they hate today. Mm-hmm. And they'll come in and check in on tomorrow, get them to respond to, you know, this craziness, and they'll come back tomorrow, because they're outraged. So show them I more mean, outrage. The ironic part about that is that all of that has already come out about Facebook. Like, all of that, that was all what Francis Haugen's leaks were about, were that yeah. for years now, people have been saying to Mark Zuckerberg, Hey, uh, we keep showing people, you know, we keep radicalizing grandmas. We keep, uh, like pushing people to anti-vax groups. We keep Mm. pushing people to more and more extreme positions. And if we stop doing that, it will slow down growth. And every time Mark Zuckerberg is literally in these leaked documents being Mm. like prioritize growth. So I can't imagine. And what I'm really curious to see actually will be the, advertising algorithms and i hope that i have not dug Mm. all the way into the digital services act but what i really want to see is that as well so not just the content that we see but the ads because i don't know if you remember this but back in i looked it up real quick 2018 because i'm obsessed with this story in europe jeremy corbyn who is like the labor the lead of the labor party right in the uk Mm. members of his own party tricked him into thinking that they were pushing a platform that he wanted them to push, but they didn't, they thought it was a loser. So literally Mm. his own party by buying micro targeted ads on Facebook. So that when he went on Facebook, he lived in an alternate reality where he was like, Oh, labor is, we're doing a great job of pushing these messages, but they weren't, they were literally just pushing them to him. So sick. It's so sick. I mean, literally that one-to-one targeting is incredible i had somebody who tried to do that with me on like google where my search results would be like their startup or something so there was Mm -hmm. like this micro targeting you could do um, and this is called lookalike audiences for people who are not familiar you can take like an email list so let's say you had a thousand people who were on the this week in startups list um then you say hey tell me people like these people then you what facebook's algorithm would do is look at the friends and say okay who works at startups or just show anybody in this network of people related to this thousand emails, show them uh, this week in startups ads. Mm -hmm. And if they click on them, then examine what the relationship between that person and the original person on the list was and find more of those people in that person's list, and then it would go spider out. Yeah, this is one of the great innovations of advertising of all time. And this is why people think their phones are listening to them. It's not that their phones are listening to them. It's that the social graph is being worked. So if you care about, I don't know, the Corvette, the new Stingray. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, great. Jason brought up the Corvette Stingray, you know, at his poker game. And then uh, Jason did searches for the Corvette Stingray, clicked on the ads. So then the advertisers then said, tell me more people like Jason. And it picked up the poker group friends and mm-hmm. showed them Corvette ads. Now they think, oh my God, our phones are listening. No, right. it's... They're looking it's at signals for me. And then, correlated yes. with your interests, correlated yes. with your searches yes. and everything yes. you've bought in the past. And it goes on right. and on and on. So I'd love to see, I mean, go a step further, right? I want to see the data gathering algorithms. Yeah. Like all of that should be transparent. It Great. will. Good for society. It is good for society. And I will just say that researchers have been screaming for this for a decade on these social platforms. If the U.S. had done regulation like this back in the day yeah so much about our discourse i mean it's just a miserable path dependency to think about that we were just like oh it'll be well and you know what this also shows is that there are paths to unravel some of the the negative effects of social media Mm -hmm. Uh, and the amount of time you spend online is driven i think by these algorithms 
And so maybe if you choose to not have your content selected for you by the algorithm, and you select your own algorithm, and when you turn it on, just like when you turn on a browser, it says, you know, would you like us to be the default? Or in some cases, I think Google did the power move of like, what would you like as your default search engine? They know they're the best. So it's 90% of people are going to do it, but you could pick DuckDuckGo as your, you know, um, you know, search engine if you were so inclined, uh, which is pretty good from what I understand. Or I Bing, mean, isn't it for years? Yeah. So, yep. you know, there you have it. Like, th there could be a, when you sign up, it says, hey, do you want the default YouTube algorithm? Or here are some popular algorithms made by other users. And this is a Disney algorithm. The people at Disney, imagine that like as an opportunity. It's going to be the same thing, though. Like, it's just going to end or up in the same place. Or it could place. be one made by the EFF. It could be one made by Common Sense Media. So I don't know if you use Common Sense Media. I do, but yeah. Uh, and this is a tip for everybody, just type in the name of the movie Common Sense Media. And actually, it's kind of like Google will auto complete it for you. So I went to see um, what's the new Jared Leto uh, Morbius. And, yeah. you know, I went, I took another kid who's a friend of my daughter's and they're both 12 ish. And I was like, Morbius, Common Sense Media. And the parent was like, Oh, my God, is this like really scary? And, like, it looks really scary from the trailer. And I was like, Well, Common Sense Media says it's 12 years old and above. Mm -hmm. And so God bless the people at Common Sense Media. I mean, I really actually you know so what? I need to join this and donate. Um, I'm gonna make a note to do that. But anyway, they and I'm gonna say I don't know, they this is a two star movie. I thought it was great. I although I, can't I did wait keep, to see this. I loved it. I um, love because I thought it was like you a, a very unique character in the MCU, the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. And I also thought like, wow, Adam Newman has a future as a you know, anti-hero. Awesome <laughs> I kept, uh, you know, like I kept getting, I, like I kept it. hearing saying, Rivka, Rivka, <laughs> no, I'm not going to drink your blood. You drink the blood, you like it. <laughs> bye, 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 Okay. I want to like, not only do I want to oh, invest in whatever oh. Adam Newman does in the future, I want to oh. like, I'm all in on the Jared Leto catalog. Like, I just want to watch. <laughs> I <laughs> love Jared Leto. <laughs> oh, oh, we drink, we drink, <laughs> we, we drink. drink, we drink blood. We also drink tequila. Oh, yay, sleep oh tequila. You're going to love it, Rivka. I drink it. I drink your tequila. You take a shot of tequila. I drink your tequila blood. I'm getting myself a bottle of that Don Julio 1942 yes. for my birthday. Because I'm a big tequila fan. I'm writing that oh. down. Hold Ooh, on are, we a still going to, are we still going to Top Gun? Are we going to do that? We will do the Top Gun, yes. The Mollywood Top Gun <laughs> uh, thing, uh, screening. Uh, birthday but I want Don Julio. You give Don Julio. You drink the good stuff now. Send Lon Harris a Don Julio. <gasps> yes. Send Molly a Don Julio and send me a Don Julio uh, by Wednesday. So we on Thursday show we can Don Julio. You are so smart. We're gonna Don Julio the the season finale. I love you. The I love this finale. job. I love you, Nick. You're so bad. I got my <laughs> I got my Cafe Du Monde, by the way. You did. Yeah. Oh, you got a cold brew. So that fantastic. Look, I know. I'm, I'm making just... my cold brew this afternoon for tomorrow. Because I'm having iced coffee now because I forgot to make no brew, more bottles of iced coffee. Only make your own in batches. No more bottles, anybody. Hey, Molly, I found a really groovy. We live in the future. Our future TV show. Yep. Uh, streamers contact me, Jason at Calacanis.com. This is going to be this is all trademark. This is Field our new show galore. that we're doing a pilot for. Okay, whoever produced? <laughs> uh, what's the best magazine style show ever made? Anthony Bourdain, I guess. Is there uh, anything better than that? I mean, like 60 for, Minutes, honestly, like... All right. Old school. Great idea. 60 Give, Minutes. Uh, if you're a 60 Minutes producer or you worked on Anthony Bourdain's show and you know what you're doing, email me. I'll hire you to produce We Live in the Future as a streamer show and we'll do the first pilot episode. This would be a perfect, perfect company. The company I saw online and the founder had actually reached out to me, so I missed this investment like an idiot because I get too much inbound. Oh... But that's okay. There's always time for a make good. They just raised $1.6 million, I believe, and it's called Pipe Dream Labs. I'm calling this Hyperloop for delivery <gasps> of packages. Okay. Molly, walk us through this. Okay. So Pipe Dream Labs is making a subterranean package delivery system, like the Boring yes! Company, but for packages. Yes! And if you, none of you are old enough to remember this, but a long, long time ago, banks had drive throughs and you would go to the drive through and you would put your like check or your money or whatever yes. in a little n tube in a little container pneumatic and tube? then you'd shove it in this pneumatic tube and it would <laughs> and just get like yes. sucked up back to the teller. Yeah. And it was the coolest, greatest thing ever. And now these people have made that are 
trying to evidently make this for package delivery. This is yes, amazing and bonkers. Because where are they going to? Where's it going to all? Okay, so it's a tiny little electric powered system transports packages at sixty miles an hour in twelve inch PVC pipes. So packages can be up to ten inches in diameter and sixteen inches long, aka almost all the crap you get from Amazon. They're yes. starting out with these neighborhood portals. So it won't necessarily be a tube right to your house immediately. But eventually but, it will be like a freaking mycelium network like the mushrooms do. Yes, yes. It, it, this is so genius because... This is amazing. You know, putting a 12-inch uh, pipe underground, that's not that hard to do. Now, these things have mo- electric motors and they have wheels on the top and the bottom. So they kind of just zip, zoom. They don't even need to go 60 miles an hour. Let's be honest. This would be on a short 10 mile track. Yeah. But let's imagine you did this in Manhattan. Or let's imagine you did this in your suburb. Mm -hmm. So now uh, you are building a planned community. And you have an Amazon warehouse or a Target or a Walmart. And Walmart says, you know what? Uh, I will pay to uh, subsidize this uh, for the community for the rights to have us connected first. And we'll Mm -hmm. put a wall, we have a Walmart warehouse here, whatever's closest would absolutely do this. Now, Walmart has all of this stuff in a robotic facility themselves, or Target, or, Mm -hmm. you know, whoever, or Cloud Kitchens. Now, Cloud Kitchens makes a burrito, boom, they drop it into the tube. It's in your house within 10 minutes. You need milk. You need three lemons because you forgot lemons. You could be doing very small package runs for free Mm -hmm. or for a dollar and pay for this. This is not cars and trucks on the road. This is literally just no traffic. It doesn't add to climate emissions. Now imagine in in Manhattan, you have unlimited numbers of doorman buildings. Mm -hmm. That's a non-gender version, door person buildings. Concierges. There you go. You got the concierge downstairs. Boom. You put one of these into the lobby. And you don't need to have it go up to every apartment. You got two, three, four hundred apartments in this building. You just build a straight shot Mm -hmm. to the Amazon warehouse, straight shot to whatever. And boom, now the apartment next to it wants to get on because everybody in this apartment gets it as an amenity. Now you only have to build a little tube from one to the other. So it spreads like a little network like the internet. The first building to get it. Yeah, it has to do it. But look at this map. If you're watching youtube.com slash this weekend, look at this brilliant map. What they did here is they built a grid system. And so let's say you lived in a neighborhood that didn't have door uh, persons or concierges. In other words, lower income, middle income, normal people, Mm -hmm. not a fancy dancy Manhattan with door people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, I get a package. I walk three blocks. And there is a kiosk. The kiosk hands me my thing. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad option either. Not really, no. Is it? Will you click on the link that says, is this using new infrastructure? There we go, under the frequently asked questions. I mean, oh. obviously, it's some new infrastructure. Yeah, I think you would have to build I'm new thinking infrastructure. About our, this. I'm thinking about our investment here and how expensive oh. the infrastructure is going to be. Well, I mean, it could be the, yeah, 100% but, in on this. Like, this should happen. This should 100% no happen. Brand. Yeah. Oh, here we go. How will you pay for the infrastructure installation? The Pipe Dream infrastructure is designed to be usable by other utility companies, electric, telecom, gas, water, sewer, if needed. That means that the majority of the physical infrastructure will be financeable using conventional bank loans, most likely originating locally wherever the system is installed. This will also ensure that infrastructure is not wasted and costs are recouped if Pipe Dream migrates to an alternative delivery method or goes out of business. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So they would lay some underground piping and then you could use that for electrical. I guess what they're totally saying is if they go out of business, somebody else could use it. So you don't have to yeah. worry about it because it's a 12 inch pipe. Yeah, it makes this total is a sense. a 12 inch pipe underground. Sure. Yeah. Uh, huh. And these things could d- also do not need to be underground necessarily. I mean, I know it would be an eyesore, but it is possible, I guess, that if you had an elevated highway or something, this could run along the elevated highway underneath it. I mean, who knows? So I was starting and, to think of it as a fifth element thing. Yeah, where I you, you like could just have it sort of thing, the Blade yeah. Runner aspect. But yeah. you know what this tells me too is that mm-hmm. drone delivery not happening. 
Clearly not happening. If we need pipe dream, drones are not working. Well, I mean, this was Elon's argument with the Hyperloop, which raised money last week. Um, the Hyperloop is not, and these pipes are not going to have a problem with weather. So right. if you have flooding, if you have tornadoes, if you have snow, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, so congrats to the pipe dream. I know it's a pipe dream right now, but it's a dream worth pursuing. Chances of success are low. Uh, but a glorious future if it is achieved. And this is what we need more of, you know, founders doing really crazy <laughs> and let's see if it happens. But this is the kind of crazy <laughs> that I'm here for. I know I'm here it. for it too. Digging is better than flying. Let's go. Well, I <laughs> well, let's think that through. I think there would be in some cases where the drones could do better. Yeah. Um, and Get that would be Get suburban areas or the, you know, uh, back country in the country. Because a drone flying 10 miles with your package over a bunch of farmland, you can't build the pipe system there, right? It'd be just right. too hard to dig up the, the earth. It's kind of like fiber, right? Fiber works in a city, starting to work in the suburbs, never going to work in the country. Yeah. So, you know, it's need be a combination of I mean, it's just like climate, right? You need every solution. You need multiple solutions. Correct. And that means there can Correct. be lots of winners. And we're here for all of them. Yeah. We're here for them. And, you know, and, and they're, I think food could be the really interesting thing here. Man, mm -hmm. you imagine McDonald's or whoever is on this tip and you just throw, you know, five in and out burgers into one of these little robots and it zips five <laughs> in and out burgers <laughs> to you. It's still hot. Oh, my Lord. I mean, I know. it's bonkers what this could mean I want if they were able to do this. The flying burritos. Uh, I mean, if you I love the idea of a planned community too, where this is the package delivery system, like all those. Totally. What's the one uh, cul-de-sac? That's trying to yes. do the really eco-friendly no yeah. planned community, like build these in and then have them terminate in the homes. Yeah. What I like about this too is because of the smaller footprint of it, you have to balance, like you're obviously not going to be sending a dishwasher through one of these things that would still be done by regular yeah. delivery or a painting or something. But what this will also do is make people think about packaging, because if you're putting things in, you know, giant boxes of cereal are not going to fit in this thing, mm -hmm. but a bag of cereal without the cardboard box around it will easily fit. And so and these things I think will be able to create little chains. So let's say somebody has six or seven of these, boom, you know, yep. um, love it. Yeah, we will live in this future. Yeah. We hope we get there. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Great show, everybody. Uh, the syndicate.com slash climate uh, launched its first deal. And uh, we can't say the name of the deal. We don't want to tip the cards of the company. But I I think uh, the reaction based on my email box was extraordinary. A lot of people I, very excited about this yeah. SaaS climate company uh, that uh, shout out to Kelly and Molly and the team for getting that teed up. And the founder emailed me, uh, texted me this weekend, was very excited. So I'm super excited. How do you feel, Molly, making a first big bet? It's amazing. I feel yeah. amazing. I mean, I cannot, it, this will be the end of month four. Yeah. And we're so just doing it. Deals. We're doing all of the things. There are two deals and one in the mm. pipeline. Like it's all, it's actually, Happy. I know you guys think all I do is sit here and spar with Jason. <laughs> but On in fact, pod. his promise to me when he uh, pitched this job was we podcast in the morning and we invest in the afternoon. And that is That's exactly it. what we do. And it's That's it. the core. In my case, podcast in the morning and ski in the afternoon. But right. Depends yeah, on the listen, day. Listen, I'm 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 <laughs> in semi retirement. Right? No, I'm not. Oh in my god! Yeah, but right. I am going to take up the summer. Uh, I'm going to take up kiteboarding. I think. Yeah. I think that'll be my afternoon delight now for the summer. Is try to get some kiteboarding in. Do you have to All like right. take lessons? What? Have you ever done I that? I take before? lessons. You know, I did yeah. it twice. You got like I, a trainer. I, I I was on Necker Island twice. Um, a friend of mine had rented it for his birthday, and I was lucky enough to go. It's quite nice. And I did kiteboarding both times. And the same thing happened both times. First day I get out there, I learn how to use the kite, you have to be on the the first day you're on the sand, just learning how to use the kite because kiteboarding is really two things you got a board. So you got to kind of learn how to surf basically. And then you have to learn how to hold a kite. And when I say kite, I mean parachute. Mm -hmm. And the kite and when it's windy will literally pull you into the air 100 feet if you screw up. So it's incredibly dangerous. And the way the kite works is if you pull down on that bar, the kite gets more taut and catches the wind and you go flying. Mm -hmm. If you let go, then it 
loosens the tautness of the strings and that the kite just falls to the ground and you don't go flying everything in your system tells right, you to like, do the reverse Ugh. right why it's would like, they design it up that if you're way. scared and now you're 20 feet in the air that's why they have like the instructor attaches themselves to you and they have their hands on the bar or whatever then day two you learn to drag yourself in the water and then uh, maybe sometime afternoon day two or three you put the board on and you try to get up on the board both days the wind died that both times i did it the wind died on the second day i couldn't get to uh, you know the promised land except for one time i got out on the water and i got up on the board and for six or seven seconds it was the most magical experience like in sports i might have ever had wow. where it's just all of a sudden you're you're flying and you've got the board you got the parachute perfectly angled and then the board lifts and you're just skimming across it i mean you're and you're going fast i mean it might only be 20 miles an hour, but it feels like you're going 100. That's so fast. Uh, and it was yeah. pretty great. And so there are places here in the Bay Area, like literally right in the Bay between uh, Oakland and SFO Airport. And then there's one in the east if you go towards Sacramento. So I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, and I had an instructor from Florida reach out and he said, uh, listen, I'm a big fan of the show. I'm, I'm a kiteboard instructor. You tell me where. I'll be there free of charge. I'll, I'll be your personal instructor. And I was like, wow, that's pretty great to be Jake Hal. Um, it is great to be Jake. It's pretty great to be Jake. Uh, so shout out to my new kiteboarding instructor. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna take that up. Uh, you know, I want to stay active and, and, you know, that kind of stuff and be healthy. So but also, I find it's good for my brain. I feel like yeah. the performance on the pod and my clarity, if I'm doing a little bit of like just an hour and a half to three hours a day of some Zen thing, mm -hmm. man, I'm more dialed in. Uh, oh, and I'm going to go to the Warriors game this Wednesday. So I'm pretty excited. I would have liked nice. to see them sweep, but uh, you can look for me behind the Warriors bench getting thrown out of the game uh, <laughs> somewhere around the third quarter. Don't get thrown out of the playoffs. I will no. not get thrown out. I will not get thrown out. All right, let's go. Let's go to the news. Let's go. Right, Congratulations let's again. If you are an accredited investor, you want to join the syndicate, read Molly and I's deal memos. We write them together with the team. Uh, the syndicate.com slash climate. I think you can sign up as well, even if you're not accredited. And at some point, if the laws change, we will email you and let you know so we we mm -hmm. are taking reservations for non-accredited investors and um read my book angel angel.university if you want to learn how to angel invest only invest the money you can afford to lose hey everyone producer nick here i want to tell you about the SaaS syndicate if you're a founder of a SaaS company with a product and market our investment team wants to talk to you head over to the syndicate.com slash SaaS s-a-a-s to apply to raise from the SaaS syndicate and you can join jason syndicate of over nine thousand accredited investors at the syndicate.com producer justin here no cool startup check out openscouting.com where anyone can refer a startup to our investment team here at launch even if you don't know the founder if you're the first to flag a company for us and we decide to invest you'll get 5k in cash or 10 percent of our carry hey everybody producer rachel here are you an early stage startup that has product and market, some traction, and are looking to raise at least $500,000? Apply today to Remote Demo Day for your chance to pitch to over 9,000 investors in Jason's syndicate. Submit your application at remotedemoday.com. Our next event is on April 27th. And if you want to learn how to invest in startups from the world's greatest angel investor, and no, we're not talking about Chris Saka, then head to angel.university to apply. The four-hour workshop costs $300 and all proceeds are donated to charity. To date, we've donated over $175,000 to various charities and you can see the full list at angel.university slash charity. 